We continue now at the top of Daf Chofam and Beis of Masech Hashkolim. This is Hashkolim Daf 20b. Now, this uh, first uh, few lines of the Gemara here, we already read it in the Girsa of the Gra in the previous Amud. Again, the Gra had said that the Girsa was confused over here, so we read it on the previous Amud, the Gra's full Girsa. So we will continue now with the two dots. The Gemara says, Amr Rav Yosa, Rav Yosa says, Adda no Tamon. While I was in Bavel, Shom is called Rav Yehuda Shal Shmuel. I heard Rav Yehuda ask Shmuel the following question. Hifrish shiklov a mace. Let's say a person separated some money from machatzis hashekel and then he dies. What do you do with that money? Amar lei. So he said to him, Yiplul in a You should use that money for a In other words, use that money for donations for carbon olos uh, during the summertime. Let's say in order that the mizbeach should not be bottle. Umosar asira sa'efa shalo. And then the Gemara continues and says, What about a situation of Moser asira sa'efa? Again, the asira sa'efa is the carbon that is brought every day by the kohen gadol. And the question is, what if the Kohen Gadol separates some money for that and he has extra money? What does he do with that money? Rabbi Yochanan Amar Yolichem Liyam HaMelech. Rabbi Yochanan says that money has to be taken to the Yam HaMelech, meaning you cannot derive any benefit, you can't use that money for anything. Rabbi Lazar Amar, Rabbi Lazar says, Yippululinadava, again, you can use that money for Nadava, use it for carbon ola. And then the Gemara continues, Asiris Ha'efa Shel Kohen Gadol. Let's say when it comes to the Asiris Ha'efa of the Kohen Gadol, again, this Asiris Ha'efa, the way it worked was, you brought a chatzi sarin in the morning and a chatzi sarin in the evening, and this was brought from the Kohen Gadol's own money. So how do you, how are you mekadesh the asir sa'efa? Rabbi Yochanan Amar chotza osa, v'yachrakach mekadsha. Rabbi Yochanan says what you did was you measured out the asir sa'efa, you then split it in half, and then each half you sanctified one half at a time. In other words, you didn't sanctify the entire thing in a klisha race and then split it. You split it first and sanctified a chatzi sarin uh, one chatzi saran at a time. Rabbi Shemel says, You do the opposite. First, you sanctify the entire thing in a klishares, and then you separate it, so half you bring in the morning, half you bring in the evening. And so the Gemara says, Masnisa Rabbi Yochanan. The following Mishnah, this is a Mishnah in Menachos, it argues on Rabbi Yochanan. The Mishnah says, Makriv mechza u mechza aved. The case over here is, let's say you have a situation where the Kohen Gadol dies in the middle of the day, so Chatzi, Saran of the morning, he's already brought. And now you have a new Kohen Gadol, so what does he do? So the Mishnah says he doesn't bring the, the Chatzi, Saran of the previous Kohen Gadol. He can't use that because that belonged to the previous Kohen Gadol. So what he has to do is he has to make uh, holy an entire new Isaron, cut it in half, and half of it he will bring in the evening, and the other half is Avad. The other half is not going to be used at all. Now the problem is, according to Rabbi Yochanan, if each half is sanctified on its own, so you haven't sanctified any of these halves. Why is it Avad? It should just have a Kedushas Damim. Why is it Avad? Why does it have to be totally lost? So the Gemara answer is very simply. Pasar law, you can answer as follows. Shekein afilu mos, yelchul yamamelech. What do we say before? We said that if a Kohen Gadol designates money in order to buy the uh, the Saron, and then he has extra money, one opinion said it has to go to the Yamamelech. So according, that was Rabbi Yochanan's opinion. So once Rabbi Yochanan's already saying the money has to go to the Yamamelech, so it makes sense that even if this Mechza doesn't have any Kedusha Saguf, it was never put in a Klisharis, still it's also Avad, it's no different than the money that goes to the Yam HaMelech. And the Gemara says further, Masnisa Pligo, this should also be Al Rabbi Yochanan, the Gras says, the end of the very same Mishnah also argues on Rabbi Yochanan. What does it say at the end of the Mishnah? It says, Nimtsu Shnei Chatzoin Kraven, Shnei Chatzoin Avudin. It says that it comes out that two halves are brought, the half in the morning by the first coin Gadol, the half in the evening by the second coin Gadol, and again, the, the other half of the morning is lost, and the other half of the evening is lost. Vitani Allah, but it says on this part of the Mishnah, we learned as follows. Mechza Rishon u Mechza Sheni. The half in the morning that is lost, and the half in the evening that is lost, to Uvar Tzuras, and you have to let them sit overnight. In other words, you have to let them become possible through the Psal of Lina. V'yatsu Lebeis Hasreifa. And then you have to burn it. And so what the Gemara is asking over here is, if you're talking according to Rav Yochanan, where there is no Kedusha Saguf, again, because each, each Chatzi Isaron, you're Mekadish it separately, so you were never Mekadish, these Chatzi Isarons, so then there would be no Psolina. You wouldn't be able to just leave it overnight and have a Psolina and burn it. That wouldn't be true. There would be no Psolina if there's no Kedusha Saguf. It would just be Yolichem Liyam HaMelech. So the Gemara answer is, Pasar Lo, Kerav Yishmol, Do Amar Isaron Mekadish. So you're going to have to say that this Braisa follows the opinion of Rabbi Yishmael. In other words, Rabbi Yochanan will say this Braisa follows the opinion of Rabbi Yishmael. Rabbi Yishmael happens to hold that the measuring Kli, the Kli that measured out the Isaron, that itself was Makadish. You didn't even need a Kli Shares. And therefore, according to Rabbi Yishmael, even within the Shita of Rabbi Yochanan, 
according to Rabbi Yishmael, there would be Kedusha Sagof. And the Gemara continues, Kesha Kohen Meskarev Techilo La'avoda. When a Kohen is doing the first Avoda that he ever does in the Beis HaMikdash, so there's a halacha that he has to bring a carbon, a carbon minchon asiris or eifa. So maybe asiris or eifa shalom. He brings this carbon, this asiris or eifa, but over the biyado he does the avoda with his hands, and that becomes his chinuch into avoda in the base hamikdash. And the Gemara continues: Echad kohen gadol, v'echad kohen kohen hediot, sha'avdu ad shalom heviu asiris or eifa shalom. Whether you have a kohen gadol, whether you have a kohen hediot, and let's say they do an avoda, but they don't first bring this asiris or eifa that's mechanech them. Avodasum Kashira, the Gemara says still the Avoda that they did is considered kosher. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Mona Boy Meima, Rabbi, Bo, Rabbi Mona wanted to say as follows. Bo Bayom Shaneskarev Tchilo La Avoda, Bo Bayom Nesman Elios Kohen Gadol. What if on the same day that the Kohen is doing his first Avoda, it's also the same day he's appointed as the Kohen Gadol. The very first Avoda he's going to do is the Avoda of being the Kohen Gadol. So in that case, maybe Shtayim, in that case he should bring two Asiris or Eifa. Achas l'chinucho, one he brings for his chinuch, meaning as his first carbon. V'achas l'cho v'sayom, and the other one should be the regular asiris ha'eifa that the Kohen Gadol brings every day. And the Gemara now says, Tufine, when it talks about the Kohen Gadol's carbon, the, uh, this minchas chavit and this asiris ha'eifa, it says Tufine, it says that it has to be baked. And so the Gemara darshans b'shaz hava Tufine. It means to say that you have to bake it at the time you're actually bringing the carbon. V'ein b'shacharis Tufine. But you don't do the baking at Shacharis, meaning you don't do it before Alos HaShachar. That's already too early. So the Gemara says, is that really true? Vataninan, but didn't we learn? Ha'emidu osa chavitin la'asos chavitin. It says that when they would wake up the Kohen Gadol, he would do the chavitin, and that was before Alos HaShachar. Apparently he did it much before Alos HaShachar. And that's a mission in Mesechus Tam, and it's talking about the general seder of the Avod of the Kohen Gadol. So the Gemara answers, Amar Rebchia Barachar, Rebchia Barachar says, la'asos chamin l'revucha. What that Mishnah simply means, is that he would heat up the water for the revucha. The revucha was, they would have boiling water uh, to boil the flour, and that has nothing to do with the baking of this uh, of this carbon. And the Gemara now says, Tufine, again, it says you have to bake it. Rabbi Yasub b'shem Rabbi Chanino, Rabbi, Rabbi Yosa says in the name of Rabbi Chanino, Metagna v'yachakach ofa. First what you do is you fry it in the oil. One of the other steps is you have to fry it in oil. So first you fry it in the oil, and then you do v'yachakach ofa osa. Then you do the baking. Rabbi Yasa b'shem Rabbi Chanino, Rabbi Yacha says in the name of Rabbi Chanino, Ofa Osa, Yacha Kach Metagna, on the contrary, first you do the baking, and then you do the frying. And the Gemara now brings Tanoim uh, with various interpretations of the Pasuk along these lines. Tufine, so again, the, the Pasuk uses this word Tufine to mean baking it. So the first opinion, the Tanakama says, Teofeno No, you have to bake it when it's already a little bit cooked, meaning you do the frying first, your uh, Metagna Beshemin first, and then you do the baking. Rebbe Yomer, Rebbe has a different understanding of the word tufine. Rebbe says, Teofen on noa, you have to bake it when it's nice. Meaning, on the contrary, don't do it when it's fried. Then already it, it looks discolored, it looks black. Better to bake it first, and then you fry it. And Rebbe Dosa, Omer, Rebbe Dosa says, Teofen on riba. The word tufine means you have to bake it many times. Meaning, according to Rebbe Dosa, you actually bake it twice. You bake it before you fry it, and then you bake it again after you fry it. And the Gemara now connects the Machlokas Tanoim we just stated with the earlier Machlokas Amoraim, as we just said. Asyon Elaine Plugsa, Kahanin Plugsa, the machlokas above about, about whether you bake it first or you fry it first is following the same machlokas about how you understand the word tufine. Mandamar teofeno no, the one who understands that it means you have to bake it nicely. Kamandamar ofer vachakach matagna, that's the one that holds, as we said before. Bake it first and then you fry it, otherwise you're not baking it when it looks nice. Umandamar teofeno no, the one who says teofeno no, you bake it when it's a little bit cooked. Kamandamar, what that means to say is like the mandamar who says, that first you fry it, and then you bake it. That way it's no at the time of the baking. The Gemara continues, Lo sof davar shemes. This case that we had before, let's say a Kohen Gadol dies, so then the second Kohen Gadol has to bring uh, the, the Chatzis Sarn from his own, uh, the, the Kohen Gadol who takes over. It's not only true when the first Kohen Gadol dies. Elo afilu nitma. It's even true, let's say the first Kohen Gadol becomes Tame, the exact same halacha in terms of the second Kohen Gadol taking over. So the Gemara says, Vafilu nidchemimum. Is it the same halacha even in a situation where, let's say, the first Kohen Gadol can't serve because he has a mum, he develops a blemish? So the Gemara answers, Tani, Rav Yehuda Bar Pazi, uh, De Bardele, or Mi Bardele, Rav Yehuda Ben Pazi taught, Rav Yehuda Ben Bar Pazi from Bardele taught as follows, Be'afilu nidchem imum. It's true, even if he was pushed off because of a mum. And the Gemara continues, Minayin Gadol Shemes. 
How do we know that when it comes to a Kohen Gadol who dies, and they don't have a chance yet to appoint someone instead of him, that his Karma Mincha should be brought from his Yarshim's property. This was the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda in the Mishnah. So that the Brisa says, It says it should be from his sons. So that's the idea over here. If a Kohen Gadol dies, his sons, his inheritors, have to provide uh, for the for the Karma Mincha until they get a replacement. So Yachol Yevieno Lechatzayim. So the Brisa says, I might think that you bring it exactly the same way the Kohen Gadol does, meaning you bring a Chatzi Saron in the morning and a Chatzi Saron in the evening. You bring it in halves. Talmud Lomar Osa. Pasuk says, Osa Kula Amarti. When it comes to the situation of the Yarshim bringing it, they have to bring a fully Saron in the morning and a fully Saron in the evening. That again, that was in the Mishnah. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. That is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says as follows, he argues and he says, Eino ba el Michel Tzibor, you don't bring it from the property of the Yarshim, rather you bring it from the public funds. Shenemar, like the Pasuk says, Chok Olam, and uh, as the Gra has the gear, so over here, Chok Olam, Michel Olam. It should be brought from the world, meaning it should be brought from the uh, public funds. And according to the Gra, the gear so finishes, Kalil Takhtar, the Pasuk says Kalil Takhtar, what does that mean? Kalil Lahaktar means it's fully burned. In other words, you might think, since it's being brought from the public funds, we shouldn't treat it like the karma mincha of a kohen, and maybe it can be eaten. Generally speaking, the mincha's kohen is kalil takter, is totally burned. But in this case, where it's being brought from the public funds, maybe that doesn't apply, and that's why the Gemara says, no, kalil takter, it means that has to be a kula lahaktara. It all has to be burned, even in this situation, when it's brought from the public funds. And the Gemara continues at the two dots, quoting the Mishnah, Kohen Gadol Shemes V'chulo. Again, the Mishnah said, let's say you have a situation where the Kohen Gadol died and there's no replacement. So we had a Machlokas in the Mishnah, and Rabbi Shimon in the Mishnah said, there's a Takana that it should come from the public funds. So the Gemara now says, Rabbi Babar Mamul boy. Rabbi Babar Mamul asked the following contradiction. Michlefa Shitasi Rabbi Shimon. It seems like the, contra- the, uh, the opinion of Rabbi Shimon is contradicted. Taman Omar, because in the Mishnah he says, Mishal Yarshin. He says, May Iker Hadin, it should be from the Yarshin. In other words, according to our Mishnah, Rabbi Shimon said, there's a Takana that you bring it from the public funds. Sounds like that's just a Takana. But May Iker Hadin, it should come from the Yarshin. Vahacham or Mishal Tzibur. But over here, in this Brais that we had before, Rabbi Shimon has a drush of Chak Olam. And he says, from the Pasuk of Chak Olam, it comes Mishal Tzibur. That's May Iker Hadin, it comes Mishal Tzibur. So it's a contradiction. Am Rebichia, Rebichia says, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, on Daf Chafalif, Omid Aleph.